from Eagle Eye Shooting and we're back at the range we're gonna be continuing doing this rob around load development for the 30-06 um, I just want to first apologize about the wind I got another 15 to 20 mile per hour south crosswind for me and I can't seem to get away from the elements so but we're back out here we're just gonna see what these do um, for the rob around testing we're on stage two uh, we're looking for that accuracy window vertical um, deviation where uh, it'll give me a starting point to uh, start loading some um, uh, uh, bar get and hopefully get that uh, optimized round but uh, once we're done doing these robin round testing I'm gonna go ahead and set up at hundred yards and we're gonna do the uh, cast load testing continuing on with the HP 38 from 11 point 11 grains and we're gonna continue on from there hopefully we can get something around a 2000 FPS mark but for now, the first shots I'm going to do, uh, they're going to be some cider rounds. This is 48 grains of Varget. Uh, this is, again, to, like I said, zero out my rifle at 300 and to re-copper foul it and also heat it up and uh, go on from there. After that, we're going to start shooting one round per uh, lighter rung. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to start out a little bit higher instead of starting out at 48.9 grains. Um, we got a starting charge today of 49.3 and then we're going to end at uh, 52.1 which is roughly 0.4 grains over max charge uh, again I'm looking for that um, you know pressure signs for that max velocity so let's get on to it guys and see what these do all right I'll sit you guys up I'm gonna have a video in video of the target downrange right back all right so uh, first off we're gonna warm up this barrel and sight in my windage from last session make sure this thing's nice and tight so I don't get scoped so, I'm gonna be aiming at the uh, 24 inch by 24 inch steel plate I got an orange mark um, spray paint it on there and see where these land
right, so it took a while because I uh, had to review the video, um, and I'm looking on a little two and a half inch screen, so it's really hard to tell what shots place what. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out again uh, on the robin round testing, except I'm going to use the steel plate. That way I got some uh, feedback and um, it seems to show up a lot better than on this orange piece of paper. So I'm just going to cross these out with a sharpie and we're going to start aiming. Point of aim is going to be here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the hottest charge. And that would be, uh, I believe it was 51.7. Uh, and I'm going to work down. And that is to even out the barrel pressures and harmonics and yada yada. So... Um, let's let's X these out. Let's head back and do round two of the robin round testing. Let's see if we can probably match the same um, situation here. All right, so let's try this again on the steel plate and see if we can match the results. Um, like I said, the first time I shot the robin round, I went from lowest to highest. Now I'm gonna go from highest to lowest, to even out the barrel pressures and uh, see what it does. Like I said, we're trying to duplicate the results again. Tenth edition, excuse me. Put some safety on. Barrel did cool down. We gave it about a good seven or eight minutes from that shooting session. So, Chrono's going. So let's aim at that steel plate and see what she does. Impact top left. Impact top left again. like uh, we're able to visually see all the impacts let's go ahead and uh, check out the results like I said it, it's kind of hard to explain the Robin testing because we're not looking for a grouping we're looking for the vertical spread and like I said, it uh, you know, looks right here, looks to be my accuracy window. And that's going to be on the upper range of the velocity. So, like I said, uh, 
cool let's uh do more testing and uh for now we're gonna go and work on some cast loads i got a camera's running out of battery so if it cuts off i'm gonna have to use a, another source of footage uh, for filming but we're gonna test these cast loads starting at this target and we're gonna continue off where we left i'm gonna re uh what do you call it uh redo the uh 11 grains and see if we could duplicate that uh that almost one inch group all right let's get set up and i'll be right back all right so man the cameras and stuff are just not acting the way they should one died on me and this one is telling me it's overheating for some reason so again i had to skip 11 grains and skip 12 grains i'm using them as ciders i re side out my scope re-zero it and we're gonna have to revisit that one but we're gonna start out at 12.5 grains uh, before this camera runs out of memory Okay Finally on paper Primers are still looking uh, kind of bloated at this point still a sign of low pressure there All right but those are all on paper. Cool. All right. Looks like we're getting some accuracy now. Let me go ahead and let this barrel cool down and uh, hang some more targets up. All right, so uh, barrel cool down for about five minutes. I think what I'm dealing with is a, a pretty whippy barrel. Um, we're finding it as we're transitioning right now at uh, 13 grains. It started shooting low again, kind of just like the uh, Sierra Match King. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just keep going. We're at 13.5 grains. I got the chrono is ready to go and we're going to see what these do. Uh, after that I'll show you guys the groups. Uh, primers is actually starting to look normal now. So here's 13.5. Shot number two. Yep. Of course the camera falls. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Sixteen oh five. All right. And the primers are looking great. That we went back up center deviation of twenty three point five nine with a spread of forty seven. Average speed is fifteen eighty. So still a little low, but they they are throwing some groupings out there. All right, we're at 14 grains now. And this will be on the top right target now. <laughs> so yeah, um, having kind of an issue with these cameras out here. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm using my phone now. And this was 13 grains, or 13.5 grains. Uh, group is about just about an inch and a half um, 14 grains and the, One of them Because uh, I only was able to shoot two I had a hang fire on one or failure to fire CCI primers like I said, I'm having issues with those and it's not that I'm seeding them too deep or anything It just I mean, I'll show you guys on the on when I get back to reloading bench. I mean uh, got a good primer strike, but It's just my experience and then 15 grains, which was up over 1640 FPS. And we're getting right there uh, just over an inch again. So we're back at an accuracy node. <clears throat> Other than that, let's see here. Uh, this was 11.5 uh, grains. Or excuse me, that was 12.5 grains. We started out, so I had to re-zero the rifle. So one, two, and then this one up here. And then 13 grains, which is 
right here. So when I get back to the reloading bench, we'll do some measurements on that. 13.5. And then like I said, I ran out of target, so I had to reuse some, but the shots are upside down. There you go. One, two, and then three right here. So, well, that's going to do it for today's testing for now. Like I said, at least we found a accuracy node or accuracy window, which I'm going to start loading my Sierra Match Kings. And it um, looks like we're still a little low on velocity on the uh, HP38. The thing is, now I'm getting uh, some good primer um, signs. Um, no pressure, over pressures, of course, but no under pressures this time. And looks like I'm still able to go up on charge. Ooh. But it's range scrap. Doesn't hurt to find lead once in a while. <laughs> there it is everywhere out here. So as I walk up to the target, I just pick these up. But let's get back to the reloading bench and let's look at the results and uh, go from there. All right, guys. See you soon. Well, guys, I hope the uh, snapshots I provided on the uh, first two rob round tests uh, come out clear enough for you guys to read. Uh, just in case it doesn't when YouTube decides to kind of change my video uh, resolution, <laughs> uh, I put on the description below uh, the uh, links for to download the JPEG pictures. That way, if you want to review it yourself, you can go ahead and do that. So the only thing, like I said, different that I did on... Number two, Robin round testing is that I started on the max or the upper end of my ladder um, ladder loads, and I worked down. Uh, this is again to um, kind of even out barrel pressures and uh, harmonics um, and stuff like that. That goes on with uh, whippy barrels like the one I'm using. And the first shot we saw was this one right here. Like I said, disregard the uh, sharpie marks. Um, so I wasn't able to review the footage accurately because I'm looking through a two and a half inch screen. Um, but this was the first shot and that was um, 51.7 grains. And then the second shot was over here and that was actually 52.1 grains. Um, and then the third shot uh, was 51.3. Now you can see where I circled here. Uh, that seems to be the accuracy window or the vertical... Uh, um, what do you call it? Climb seems to kind of settle out. And I'll go over the rest of the shots over here shortly. But for now, um, I'm going to use that. And it's also pretty identical with the uh, first test results. And uh, if you look at it closely, you can see that um, the same powder charges were, uh, like I said, in line with each other. And on the um, we're shooting upper left of my point of aim. Which, for instance, on this one, my point of aim was down here um, inside the circle, just below the orange mark. Now, we saw some interesting things happening on these shots over here. Um, for shot number four, and uh, which was kind of a, you know, similar to the first one also, the first test. Uh, shot number four was 50.9 grains. And this was, it was right here. And it took a, a, a dive. It went way down. So from here to here, it seems to be between those two charges, there is a, a transition happening with the harmonics of the barrel. Um, and then the next shot climbed right back up. And that was uh, 50.5 grains, shot number five. And it actually went into one of the screw holes here, uh, which is opposite of the, uh, the first rob round test. But if we look at the corner results, you can see where the FPS was. And it was pretty in line uh, with... Um, I believe it was uh, 51.3 and you can see right there uh, it's within about three quarters of an inch of vertical um, climb. So the shot 7 and 8 uh, was uh, 49.7 grains and 49.3 grains which were right here. Though you know it looks like those may be the best grouper and maybe the best like I said um, accuracy out of all these powder charges I'm not going to use that load. And this is what I'm talking about when you do your load development. Like I said, those, uh, though, those two uh, groups may be the best, or giving us the best grouping. 
when it comes like winter time or when weather changes or for instance uh, your rounds are left in your truck or car and they get hot um, it's going to change the way the powder burns and it can make it can make it shoot lower or it can make it shoot you know higher or whatever it, it's just not going to group the way you want to want it to group next time you go shooting so this is what I was talking about where I think the Robin round testing really uh, stands out um, as you can see when I do my my load development and for instance I find a uh, you know a sub MOA group at 51.2 grains you can see here that if weather was to play a factor of it if it drops down uh, in temperature uh, thus making the powder burn a little slower for instance about 50.9 I'm going to be within the same kind of vertical uh, shot range though I may shoot left or right uh, that I can compensate for but it's like I said it's still going to be pretty in line where my point of aim is well I hope these uh, results um, really help you guys kind of understand how this robin round testing works um, I didn't really have to do two of these and the only reason why I did is because like I said it was hard to see on the on the paper target and there is an option to uh, help you guys out when you're doing this by yourself if you don't have a camera and that is to basically take the bullet that, that you're going to be doing a robin testing and get multiple color sharpies and color code your bullets so as you pass through a white background paper you'll be able to see your shots uh, that was a good trick that I read on that article on 6millimeterbr.com other than that uh, let's go over the cast load development testing that we've been doing and that one I was doing at a traditional 100 yard shot uh, load development and the reason why I'm not doing a robin round test on that one is because I don't plan on shooting that past 300 yards so let's go ahead and uh, look at those uh, those shots and like I said I'll show you that one um, what do you call it failure to fire uh, cast load I get uh, that I had and uh, like I said, I'm having issues with certain CCI primers, um, this being one of them. So uh, I kind of misplaced the targets I had out there. I was going to take a measurement, and um, but you can see that the, most of them are all grouping around an inch and a half, two inches. And uh, we we're still climbing on FPS. We got up to just over uh, 660 FPS. But uh, to go over that, hang uh, that failure to fire bullet, um, this was that what load that was but you can see where this bullet itself I say there's still powder in there was struck and I did this three times restriking the primer and it just did not go off the primer isn't seated too far down or anything like that and there is a pretty good primer strike on that so I don't know what it what's happening um, maybe it could be my rifles or maybe not as uh, hard on the primer strikes but I'm having the same situation with my AR with uh, primer strikes with CCI's and um, even the CCI large uh, rifle primers uh, that's why I've been kinda leaning more towards uh, using uh, Remington six and a half seven and a half and um, also the uh, large rifle primers and stuff for on their brand but uh, to go over let's see for instance the uh, brass um, you can see here at 12.5 grains you can see the soot around the case neck I was talking about and that's what I'm talking about the poor obturation where the case neck wasn't expanding and hitting the uh, barrel sealing the barrel um, and gases were going around and uh, let's see here I could probably kind of show you with the bullet all right so if I was to take a regular bullet, you can see that, of course, it should be able to freely go in and out, but there is a little bit of play. Not as much as the regular um, rounds, such as the Sierra Match Kings, which had a lot more power, of course, and powder behind it. And you can see that these really opened up and pretty much sealed the barrel. So. Here's the powder coated bullet again. It's barely moving. And here is the uh, Sierra Match King bullet. So, again, like I said, we're still low on charge. And you can see there also on the primer, 
Uh, it's still looking a little bit bubbly or bloated. But we ended up uh, getting some normal looking primers around, um, what was it, uh, let me find it, it was 15 grains. Here's 15 grains that I shot, and this is what put us over 1680 FPS. And you can see there that the primers are starting to look um, pretty normal. And you can see there that there's no cratering happening. Now, so we're going to keep load developing this um, HP38. Um, I'm going to probably go up to about 17 grains and stop. And then I'm going to switch over to uh, H4198 and see how those do. Um, like I said, uh, I also tested my BHN again on my bullets. And I found something surprising. I must have somehow when I did these bullets, I must have grabbed the wrong ingot, uh, pure lead, and threw it in there. And the bullets that we've been shooting were a 10.4 BHN. So pretty pretty soft bullet. So I really I really don't want to go up much more until I uh, cast some more bullets that are a higher BHN, uh, roughly 18. Well, guys, this about wraps it up. Um, like I said, next video we're going to be doing stage three on the Robin round testing, and that's the developing um, rounds at the accuracy window. Uh, like I said, um, with the Robin round testing, you're able to kind of save your uh, reloading supplies. Um, I didn't really need to do uh, two two tests on the Robin round test, but I just I just did it anyway to show you guys. And also, you can combine your stage one. Uh, finding for max pressure and stage two on the same range day um, if you're able to shoot and of course have some help spotting your targets and all that but uh, come next video like I said we're going to be doing uh, more cast load development as well and after uh, you know I'm going to probably be switched over and start like I said H4198 um, I'll, I'll figure out if I want to use this brass or see if I can go get some more brass and do some cast load development with uh, 230 grains and other than that uh, we're going to continue on with Varget and uh, go from there well guys like I said hope you enjoyed this video any comments below uh, you're more than welcome uh, like subscribe and I appreciate you guys watching well I'll catch you in the next video uh, see you soon mm -hmm.